Hello, welcome to this video. Let's get a simple and quick overview on all the features you need to know to start using Adobe Photoshop Lightroom CC Classic Version. Do not forget to visit our YouTube channel and our website to get free content and participate in our exclusive giveaway campaigns. Adobe Lightroom CC is a great solution for professional photographers that want to get the best from their photos by correcting and enhancing their appearance. This is available in two main versions. Lightroom Classic CC is a desktop-based software suitable for advanced and expert users, whereas Lightroom CC is a cloud-based version simpler to use and accessible across several devices, including tablets and smartphones. Both these versions require a subscription plan, being part of Adobe Creative Cloud. In this video, we will see only the Classic version. Lightroom Classic opens on its main interface, divided in several workspaces from library to web. These show a big preview on the center, and several panels around that you can hide and show by using the arrows on the extreme edges. These also enlarge the preview if you need. The library workspace is the place where you import your photos and manage these inside collections. To add photos, use the Import button on the left and browse for the interested folder. Its content will appear on the center where you can pick all the photos to be imported by checking their top left corner. You can also use Check All and Uncheck All at the bottom to select or deselect all the photos shown all at once. On top, set how to import these files. The default Add option imports photos as virtual links without creating physical copies. You can use either Copy or Move to copy or move the selected photos to another destination folder chosen on the right in order not to get these files unavailable in case the original ones get moved or deleted. When you go to Import, all the photos get listed on the left inside a default Lightroom catalog called All Photographs. You can also group photos on your own by using the Lightroom Collections. Just use the plus button to create a new collection and then drag and drop photos onto it. The preview on the center shows the content of the chosen catalog or collection from the left. By default, this uses a grid view to show multiple photos complete with their thumbnail, but you can switch to loop view to check photos one by one, selecting these from the film strip panel at the bottom. Here you can also right-click and go to Remove Photo to remove the selected photo from either Lightroom or your computer. The library workspace includes several features to categorize and apply quick corrections to the photo shown on the preview. At the bottom you can set ratings, orientation, and other options. On the right you can take a look at the histogram to check the color distribution of the photo for each of the RGB colors from the left side representing the darkest parts of the photo to the right side for the brightest ones. At the bottom, use Quick Develop to improve the photo appearance, applying ready templates under Saved Preset or making custom adjustments on colors with Temperature and Tint or on exposure, blurriness, level, and color definition with exposure, clarity, and vibrance. Corrected photos show a plus minus icon on their thumbnail. Below, Quick Develop adjusts any photo metadata and keywords instead. To apply advanced corrections, you have to switch to the Develop workspace. The preview will be automatically set on loop view, showing the photo selected and its details when zooming in and out on it with your mouse wheel while holding down the control key. On the left side, you can go to Presets to pick ready templates. Just hover over these to check the result and click on these to apply. Whereas if you prefer making custom corrections, you can use the panels and the tools on the right side below the histogram. 
These panels apply adjustments on the whole photo by setting and changing each property. You can slide on the bars, drag on the property values, or click directly on these to type in, applying with the Enter key. If you make any mistake, you can undo with Control or Command and Z, or go through your actions with the History window on the left. Inside BASIC, you find the most common adjustments to improve the photo, such as temp and tint to apply color filters, exposure and contrast to correct these levels, and highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks to correct the brightness level on both dark and bright sides of the photo. Then use Texture, Clarity, and Dehaze to remove blurriness and haze, and also enhance the weaker colors with Vibrance, setting color intensity with saturation. Inside Tone Curve, you can shape the luminance curve, regulating the brightness level from the darkest sides of the photo with shadows, to the brightest with highlights on the right. Within HSL and Color, you can correct each single color within the RGB space, using Hue to change the color itself, Saturation to set its intensity, and Luminance for its brightness. Whereas, use Split Toning to balance the highlights and the shadows for the colors chosen on the rectangles, in terms of hue and saturation. The other sections, from Detail to Calibration, collect other professional corrections in order to sharpen contours, apply noise reduction, and also lens correction according to the camera used. Use Transform to change perspective. The Effects panel to add cool vignetting and grain effects, and Calibration to correct the color spread according to the RGB color code. On each section, you can use the left button to disable and enable modifications applied and the Reset button at the bottom to come back to the default options. As you make enhancements on the photo, you can enable the Compare views at the bottom to compare its final appearance as After and its original one as Before. Whereas, if you need to compare different adjustments applied on the photo, you can use the snapshots on the left. Click on the plus button to save the current photo appearance as a snapshot. This way, as you make modifications, you can come back to any of the snapshots saved by clicking on these and choosing the best one for you. Lightroom CC also includes several adjustment tools below the histogram that can be used on the preview directly, adjusting their properties on the right. Then, use Done to finalize. Use Crop Overlay to crop the photo by sizing, moving, and rotating the rectangular grid on the preview, locking its aspect ratio by holding down the Shift key. Enable Spot Removal to correct small imperfections on the photo by either dropping a single circle or an entire brush. The correction is made by following what is under the reference area on the opposite side of the arrow in between. Then you can move each of these zones and set their size, feather, and opacity on the right. The Red Eye Correction tool removes red eyes by clicking on these directly. Lightroom also offers several adjustment filters used to apply corrections only on limited portions of the photo selected by clicking and dragging on the preview. For example, you can add graduated filters to apply progressive filters from the original photo appearance to the corrected one, or radial filters to do the same but with an elliptical or circular shape whereas you can enable Adjustment Brush to create a filter with a custom shape by brushing on the photo. Once any filter is made, use Done to apply it. Depending on the adjustment tool enabled, the preview shows the filters made as gray circles that you can select, move, and shape. On the right, under the Edit section, 
you can tune the corrections to be applied on the selected filter. You can switch to New to create another filter of the same kind and independent properties. To export any photo modified, just open it on the preview and go to File, Export. Here, set where to save it, its name, its metadata, and also its file properties, such as format, color code, quality, and pixel resolution. With Lightroom, you can also make books, slideshows, and pages starting from your actual film strip collection by using the sections in the top right corner. Check them out. Thank you for watching this video. To discover more about Adobe Creative Cloud, make sure to visit our channel.